Hey, we're live. Hey, YouTube. How are you guys? I tried go going live on my phone. It still says I can't. So I'm hoping that my signal is strong enough to go live on my Chromebook. Um, if it's delayed, I'm sorry. Just bear with me. I'll kick my kids off of their internet. And I'm going to make sure all my stuff here is turned down on my phone. We are getting ready to make soap. And not just any soap. The soap that we specialize in, which is our goat's milk soap. So let me... I'm in my house. You hear that? <laughs> I'm washing a large load of laundry and it's offset so you can hear it. It'll just last for a minute. How funny. Uh, real life. I should, I should rename the channel to this is real life. Um, signal out there. It's too far from the house. Building. So I'm trying to bring you into my world. Uh, I have three boys. I have them occupied right now. Hopefully long enough to get this done. I'm trying to get where you can see my counter and myself. Let's, let's adjust it. Bear with me. Does that cut my head off? I'm pretty short. So let me, that almost gets it. Almost, almost. Okay. Today, I uh, was inspired by a wonderful nurse who asked for some rose scented soap. And I try to always use essential oils. But when I do use a fragrance oil, I try to find the very best. And on a few companies. Uh, I can't put it in the description, but I will tell you Rustic Essentials, No Parabens, Affiliates, Bath and Body Safe, fabulous fragrance oil. I've used their Blackberry fragrance oil for a long time. Never had any issues with our super sensitive skin. So I can't use laundry soaps and I can't use all kinds of things. Perfumes, body sprays, lotions, but this stuff does not break us out. You have to dilute it correctly, though. So that's the, the little caveat there. Um, really? My dogs. So funny. Um, I also have some a whole brand new bag of rose petals that we're going to decorate the soap with. So I'm going to set these off camera so they're not in the view. I have some real Himalayan sea salt that I actually use. Um, and we're getting ready to go. I have, all I have to do is get my goat's milk in here, get it measured out, measure out my goat's milk really quickly. Please, if you have never made soap or you want to make soap and, um, never worked with lye, we have videos, um, back last, I want to say two years ago, check out how to handle lye, um, Please take all the precautions. Work in a well-ventilated area. Use glasses, goggles, gloves. Um, also, if you're making stuff for the public, sterilize all your equipment with alcohol. Um, I have wiped everything down with alcohol. Um, we do have some fur babies in our house. So I make sure I clean all surfaces. There is not going to be you know, a dog hair in my soap, for goodness sakes, and work cleanly. So it's clean. Everything that I'm wearing is clean. I don't have my gloves on just yet because I'm not to the lie part, but I will put my gloves on and my mask just to be safe. So let me grab my uh, goat milk out. I have a uh, in this recipe is an eight pound recipe. And um, if you are curious of how to start making soap, please, sorry, one second. Let me throw this in there. Please do your research, um, look up recipes, but a great place to calculate your soap recipes is soapcalc.net. There we go. I had to put that to ounces. Also, um, most of the water is goat's milk. 
but I do use some ice um, and it's distilled water. So make sure you're using distilled water and your recipe. I freeze it in ice cube trays and add it in too. Now I like to have both the goat's milk and the ice. Not only does it keep the goat's milk from scorching, um, it also cuts down on any fumes that you're going to get. You're going to get, of course, a little bit of fumes from your lye, mix, your lye, but it's unreal. You, you can't see it fuming up. It's going to have, it's going to smell. You're going to have a little bit, but it cuts down instead of using just plain water. And it also helps the, the time that I need, because I need this to be a cold process soap. If I was making a hot process soap, it wouldn't matter. Okay, there we go. So being a cold process soap, you want your lye and uh, your oils to be under or around 80 degrees. Um, you want you know, ideally you want to keep it between 75 and 80 degrees. If it goes over that, it's okay. Just try to get it to cool down. You also need a blender. So if you've already watched my videos, I have lots of videos out. What you need exactly for your soap making, please watch those videos if you've never made soap. But if you have made soap, we're going to get it going so we can hurry up and Get this Mama? stuff done. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Okay, go set it over there. Thank you very much. Okay, I already have my, I'm going to be using a red. So I have three mica powders from my favorite. I'm not for sure if I could say from who. Um, if you want to know who I use, it's a mica company. Um, I'm mad about them. So that that's a hint of who they are. Uh, this is three colors that you mix to make the true red. And then for the pink edition in the soap, um, this is a French rose clay. Um, it's going to be amazing in the soap. Um, it's a little pricey, but this is going to be a little luxurious soap. I'm also um, using rose hip oil. It's amazing for your skin. Um, and a little bit goes a long way. We put the rose hip oil and I use it in a face serum, which I have not, uh, I need to make for the public. And I also use it in our body butter. So if you don't know, we are a bath and body company. Uh, we started, we're just about a year old now. So still brand new to the game. September uh, 20, 28th is when it was official. I have to look, let me double check. Um, you need your instant red read thermometer. Oh, let me get my mask. Got to get those. Make sure you're using a proper mask. Um, N95, you're still getting a small amount of the particles. Um, just don't stand over your mixture. It's, this is just fine. You could use a bandana. I mean, you could use whatever you feel, but if you're not in a well-ventilated area, Please do so. Have some windows open. Have a fan going. We have fans blowing the air around. This is I have high ceilings, and we are also using ice. So let me get this ready. Oh wait, before I do this part, I got to get my oils out. One second. Skipping ahead. Going going too fast. This is my oils. I was starting to warm slightly in the microwave because I do not want them hot. Okay. Can you hear me? Let's take this down. Oh, I can't stand to wear these very long. With asthma, it's no fun. Oh. There we go. So, I'm going to take my little measuring and I'm going to disperse my mica powders in oil. Not water, oil. And you cannot, I can't just add oil to my mica powders. I have to use the oil 
that I'm going to put. So I just take a little bit of oil out and then I'm going to show you. You just stir it together. See how it, it's already making that beautiful, gorgeous red. Let me, let me mix it up really good and I'll show you. You want to get everything ready before you open that lye because literally as soon as I put the lye in with the goat's milk, I am, I am running the risk of, you know, it taking, I got I to gotta constantly stir the goat's milk with the lye so there's no scorching. And then once you mix the lye mixture with the oils, you have to work quickly. Um, this is fragrance oil behaves beautifully. Um, I've used it one time, so we're fingers crossed. It's still going to do the same and we're all going to measure everything by weight. Um, I also have a titanium dioxide. Let me get my containers because I want the soap to be, um, white, pink and red. I want it to be very, uh, beautiful. So here we go. We're going to get a little titanium. Oh, can't see down here. A little titanium dioxide in there. This is a teaspoon. We're in two teaspoons because it's a huge batch. Okay. And then once a good, a good rule of thumb, once you've used something, set it aside, set it back. So, you know, my castor oil is still setting here because I haven't used that. I also use a sodium lactate, which is it's, uh, a natural ingredient. It just helps the soap set up quicker and pops out of the mold a lot easier. So instead of waiting over 24 hours, oh, you see what I'm doing? Talking. Not ready for the fragrance oil yet. Jumping ahead. I need to slow down. Still, still working out my nerves and my lives. Y'all are so patient with me. I appreciate it. Um, where's my little mixer here? Here we go. I have off the camera. This is my original tea pitcher that I started. I bought a tea pitcher and, and started making soaps and that, like the little two pound recipes. Also for your soap making supplies, dedicate these, um, now to all soap making. Don't make food. Don't, don't prepare food in these. This is now soap, especially because plastic is very porous and you cannot use, you have to use stainless steel and plastic or glass. Please do not use aluminum. You'll cause, it'll cause a chemical reaction. So I used one of those strainers one time thinking it was a stainless steel strainer and it was not. It was aluminum and it started to fume and have a chemical reaction and I had to dump a whole bunch of soap. A whole batch of soap is, it, it, you know, even if it's only two pounds, it's heartbreaking because you work so hard. So that's dispersed in oil. If you disperse your titanium dioxide, I have found in water, then you get what they call glycerin rivers, which to me is, isn't fine. But in the soap, when you cut it, it kind of looks like little rivers going through your soap. So I think the oil dispersing all your mica powders, your clays and stuff and oil is the best. Now, this is the uh, uh, rose clay and I'm going to add a little bit of the oil in with the rose clay and also disperse this. Some people just put the clay in and uh, start mixing and blending it up. I don't think that's a great idea. I like to do the same thing with my uh, with my clays as I do my micas. But you have to use quite a bit of little bit of oil. So let's do that. Just enough to make it where it's liquid. You don't need it super runny. You just need it enough to where it's mixed in, and it's gonna. Isn't it pretty? Looks so pretty. It's going to be a pretty peak addition. So you just want it a little thinner than that. And in my opinion, um, and I've said this before, making soap is like baking a, a, you know, a layered birthday cake. 
you're going to have to measure all your ingredients really well. Look how pretty that is. I hope that color is coming out. You're going to have to mix your ingredients really well, measure your ingredients really well, and um, you're going to have just as much cleanup. So uh, literally, this is a bunch of cleanup. You, you don't realize the cleanup afterwards. That's, that's a pretty good consistency. It's a little thick. Let me try just a ton of time a bit more. I wanted a little more fluid, not super runny or anything, just, just so I could scrape it out with my spatula a little better. I have mixed the clay in just by dumping it in and using the blender. And in my opinion, by the time it blends up, then the soap is really thick. And then I'm the, um, the soap I'm making today I'm going to leave at a light trace, as light as I can, so I can do some beautiful drop swirls because, um, or, you know, we could even try to do it in the pot swirl. In the pot swirl is uh, a soap. People love that. It's where you pour it all into one pot, and then when you pour it into the mold, it just, it's so beautiful the way it blends. And if you tilt your molds, it has another awesome effect, so... Okay, so now uh, this stuff is, is just about, let's see the temperature. It's 82 degrees. I don't want to heat it up too much more than that. The coconut oil is a high melting point coconut oil. So it is, um, it's about 90 degrees to get it all melted. But once I pour the lye mixture uh, in there, it'll kind of help melt the rest of it so I don't have to I don't have to get this see it it's almost completely melted if I stir it with my spatula it would come out I'll show you I'm going to add my castor oil so I don't forget castor oil is what's going to make your soap uh lather sorry my brain my brain will work at the same time I'm talking. Okay, so we need measure by weight. Perfect. I'm a little handy dandy recipe here um and when you're putting your castor oil in a good rule of thumb it's about a half ounce per pound this is an eight pound recipe so that's a good rule of thumb and let me set it down here so i'm not thinking i put that in there this is good let me give this a nice little stir A lot of people also use the lye uh, and water mixture to melt their hard butters and oils, uh, like the coconut oil and stuff. You could do that as well. This is just my method. There are several people who have their own their own method to their madness. So uh, there are several several different people that I, I love and I watch. One of my favorites. Uh, she's become one of my favorites. Not only is she a Texan, but she is super smart. She'll teach you about labeling. She'll teach you about um, just how to make the really fancy soaps. I don't really make a lot of the ones with the high tops and the embeds uh, because, for one, those bars that have to charge a lot more. I try to make the goat's milk soap available to people with sensitive skin and this one is going to be considered kind of a luxury bar, but I'm keeping the cost down by using a fragrance oil instead of using an actual rose essential oil. Like I said before, the rose essential oil is expensive. So double checking. I need my, I need it over to pounds. And I need to measure my lie now. This is, 
where you need your mirror mask. Oh, and also the sodium lactate. This is when you can add that in. Uh, let me get a little measuring cup. One teaspoon per pound. So we're going to need eight, of, eight teaspoons. This is 20 milliliter. No, oh, that's four there. So I need two of these. This is just like one of those medicine. Oh, no. Too much. There we go. This is one of those medicine measuring cups. That's all that is. Pop that in the seat. I'm going to wipe that off really quickly. And then I'm going to put this up. Now you could use salt. There's recipes uh, that have salt. The recipe that I'm using is on our channel, so go look for our goat's milk base recipe. I'm about to do a little update on that recipe because I know I think I can make it a little better. You know, you make a video and then you, you realize I could do better. So I'm going to check my recipe one more time. Even though I make this all the time, I just like to double check my numbers. Now we're getting ready to pour the lye in. Here we go. You can see there's no fumes. Oh no, we are shy. We are shy an ounce and a half. Ounce and a half is all I'm shy. Let me see if I have another bottle underneath here. If not, I gotta run to my soap shed. Oh Lord, have mercy. I thought I had enough. No big deal. Here's my little spatula. So if my thing goes off, I'll just go out and I'll run out and get some more. I'm going to mix this in just a little bit so it doesn't scorch any of that milk. Ah, this is real life. Live TV. Well, live YouTube. Okay, so... Give me one, it's going to probably be one minute exactly. One minute exactly. Count it down. I'll be right back. So sorry. Maybe don't, don't go in the kitchen. Mercy, I'm so sorry. Yay, and my stuff didn't go off. Perfect. That's all I needed. Whew, I ran. Got my workout today. <laughs> oh my goodness, sorry about that, guys. Hey, gals. I could have sworn that would have been enough for one more batch. So now I can take this away for now. I won't need to measure anything else until I measure the uh, fragrance oil. Can you 
Can you see? Hope you can see really well. Still at 51 degrees, 51.4. Good stuff. We want to dissolve all of this and melt all of the goat's milk and ice. This recipe, eight pounds, uh, by the way, is going to fill up four of my two pound molds. And I'll show you what those look like in just a minute. I'll put those out so you can see me pouring. Oh, and also, if you splash any of this mixture, clean it up so it doesn't eat away at your counters. And if you get any on your skin, use vinegar. The vinegar, the acid on the vinegar, will cancel out the alkaline in the lye. So if you splash this on your skin, all the other soap people will tell you wear long sleeves. So don't do what I do. It's, in, it's hot here in Texas. And I know as soon as it touches my skin and I feel the burn, I go and I wash it off, okay? So I take vinegar, I have it ready to go, and I rinse it right off of my skin. My skin is really sensitive, so I know immediately when it is touching my skin. So take your own precautions. Some people think that the short gloves are better. Some people think that you need to have long sleeves and, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of good to that. So if I were to spill this onto my body, it would, it would, you know, I would be a big issue, but I just proceed with caution. Whatever you do, if you feel like you're accident prone or you feel like you can't, it's your first time and you don't know, where are the layers? Where are the shirt, the long sleeve shirt? Where are the clothes, shoes? You know, make sure you're taking all those precautions. But I've been making soap going on three years now. And I feel that I, I can do it. I'm not vigorously stirring this so it doesn't splash up. I'm also using a tall container. Uh, that's why I like using the tea pitcher because if it did splash, it usually never came out of the tea pitcher. So just take those things in consideration. This is almost melted. I'm going to check the temperature. It's at 84 degrees. So we're still keeping it under 90. Now, if your mixture is getting too hot, you could throw some ice in your sink or ice in a, another one of these containers. Uh, if you don't have these containers, you can just find a bigger bowl. Like I used to use stainless steel. So you could take your stainless steel bowl and put it inside of a bigger one and put ice underneath it to keep your temperature from getting too hot. See, if, see that? It's already getting a little thick from the fats and the milk. I like that. It's so cool. And the rose clay has gotten a little darker as it's set here. So I am going to take, before we mix these two, 
I'm going to take a little bit of the titanium dioxide and add it because I wanted this more pink. Add a fact. Give me spatula. not to get it oil on the might see the other one if it's got oil on it hope this doesn't so any of your darker colors like your uh, dark blues greens if you add titanium dioxide then um, you can lighten it up and you can change your colors it's pretty cool Okay, now that this is if this is good and melted, I'm taking my face mask off. Ah. Always fun with a hat on. Woo, I can breathe now. Well, this sure got red as it set. It's it's beautiful. I love it, but I wanted pink. Oh, there we go. It's lightening up there. Now a rose clay. Um, from what I've read, is the Moroccan red clay mixed with a Kaolin white clay to get your rose clay. So uh, I believe this is closer to the Moroccan red clay, um, in my opinion. So let's put the rest of that one in here with the red. Mama? Yes, dear. Can I wash the TV? Um, in just a bit. I when I'm done, okay? Okay. A lot of love going into these bars here. If you have any questions about the soap making, please don't hesitate to put it in the comments. And while I'm making, I'll look up at the comments from time to time and try to read them. If you're a new subscriber, please let me know and thank you so much. Um, we are trying to grow this channel, not only to help other soap makers to start making soap or to see how we make our soaps here at 3H Farms Texas, but um, we just really, you know, love the YouTube community. We'd love being able, if we have a question for something, I love being able to get on YouTube and look it up. It's just so cool to me, uh, the community that is here. I just, it's so informative and it's so nice. To me, this is not pink, this is not light pink enough. So we're gonna add some more. Just, this is, a, this is not a soap that I've made yet, but I'm just I'm kind of playing around with the desired colors that I want. And that's something that you can do. And then once I do create a soap that I want to recreate, um, I write down the recipe and I see, you know, if, if it's a super popular soap, I go back and I recreate it. So as soon as I'm done here, I'll write down, this is what I use, this is what I mixed. 
and and try to recreate it the best as I can. Okay, so I got a lighter pink there, and then I got a red there. So red, light pink. Well, it's not light pink. It's actually dark pink. And then I have my white, which I am thinking that's not going to be enough white. We're going to add a little bit more there because it does... And this is also the same mica company that I'm mad about <laughs> that I get the titanium dioxide, but there's several companies you can choose from. So do your research, whatever's closest to you. I like their shipping prices and I like, um, I just really like this company. I'm going to write them and make sure I could use their name because I think I've used their name in the past without permission, and I apologize. I'm not trying. Okay, so now uh, the rose hip oil. I don't want to forget this. I can add this right now uh, in the little thicker, like where the clay is. Just a little bit. Now, I don't have to exactly measure this one out because I know I just need roughly, I, it, you know, I don't need a whole lot because rose hip is very strong. So I put about, you know, uh, half an ounce in each of these little containers. Still think that pink is a little too dark, but we're going to work with it. Okay, now we can blend. If we're all ready to go, we can blend these. And I cannot forget my fragrance oil. So I'm going to stick that out here. Look, I have the mic up. Hold on. I got the mic on my glove, which I'm going to get everywhere if I don't rinse it off. And this is a process. This is, uh, that's why I'm doing a live soap making because for one, I don't have time to edit. I really don't anymore. Not with three kids, a farm, you know, we have 10 goats. A, I have lost count on the chickens. So um, I just, I try to upload the videos or I use a live, the live feature so that way you can see my process. So either if you're buying soaps from us or you're wanting to make your own soaps or you just like watching people make soaps. So I'm definitely not like the, that cute girl that does the royalty soaps. She makes the best videos. She has the time lapse. I'll get there. I, I will. I promise. Especially when I get it. Uh, YouTube money, YouTube revenue, then I could purchase better equipment and a program that'll be a lot easier for me to edit. So I'm going to use this container again. So I'm just going to scrape out every bit of my lye into this container. This is all the stuff they edit and take away. You want to scrape. You don't want to lose any of your lye mixture. Oh, and I forgot to show you. My temperatures are below 90. I know they are because it just very rarely climbs up. And I'm so used to doing this, I should have showed you the temperature. So it's 77.9, which is perfect. We want it to stay nice and cool. We want the temperatures to stay nice and cool. So uh, here we go. The blending part, it's so pretty. Can I get closer so you can see? Oh, that's, now you can't see. There you go. Oh, burp it. Or give it a little burp. You don't want a bunch of air bubbles in there.
Don't pick your blender up out either. You will splash yourself if you pick your blender up while you have it pressed. So keep it under the oil. Start, it's still separated, so you're got to blend that until it's it's come together. trace uh, where you when you pick up this you can you can kind of see like a little indentation but it's really thin right now we like to work with it thin when we're doing um, you know a drop swirl I like a thinner batter but since we're going to do it in the pot swirl I needed this a little thicker so it'll set on top of each other and not mix up <laughs> to separate it and mix in the white because if I wait too long it's going to get too too thick so put that over there I have a paper towel by the way laying down here fold it up a couple times so that I can lay my stuff on there so we're going to split the batter uh, does it show you on the side it's about five liters a little over five liters now we're going to split it up I want quite a bit of white, so I'm going to, I think that's good for the white. I'm going to do the, a little bit in the white here, just to get that loosened off the bottom, then the pink. which I still am not happy with how dark that pink is. 
some red. I'm going rogue. I'm just going to put a tiny bit of the pink in here. I'm not happy with the amount of pink. It's not enough. This one and that one are very close together. And then we use the rest for white. And I'm going to pour these possibly in this one. So I'm going to scrape this one really good. You don't want to waste any of your soap batter. And it makes it easier to clean up. So if you scrape your containers really well, you're not going to have to uh, spend a, a long, long time cleaning. And that's your product that you're, you're, you know, your soap. You're rinsing down the, the drain. So scrape your containers. These containers, if you're wondering, I got from, from Web Restaurant. Webstrong. That's how you, I have to say it like that. Or I can never say it correctly. So if you go onto your interweb and look up restaurant supply companies, you can probably find one in your area. This one ships. Like I get it, we have a warehouse in Texas, and so usually when I order from them, I can get it in a couple of days. I get my uh, organic coconut oil from there. I get my olive oils from there. I get um, I pretty much get all of my oils for my soap from there, unless I can find them on a good deal somewhere else, but. Oh my goodness. This always takes a minute. Sorry. You can literally see no waste not want not. Okay. So white is going in here. That is this one. Stir it a little bit. I'm gonna mix some of that white in there. And then I'm also going to put my fragrance oils in last because you never know. Now, this last time behaved beautifully, but, um, you know, I was making a really small batch. So we are going to put them in last after we get the colors mixed in to ensure that we're not accelerating the process. Accelerating means it'll thick it up really quick. So if you ever say see something and it says accelerates your soap when you order it know that your work time with that fragrance oil does not take long Oh, that's nice. Okay. That, that is a nice white color. Not too bright. Not fake white looking. Not like I just whitened my teeth white. It looks like milk. So we're going to keep it like that. And then I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pour a little bit in here. Doing a drop swirl, we're going to layer the colors. So this was going to be our white. that. I'll go ahead and move this over for a minute. I already used the rosehip oil. 
We are going to put a little bit of pink in that, just a little. I have a bright pink, but it's too pink for this. So I know earlier I told you to disperse all your colors. So if you don't disperse your colors, you just have to make sure you mix it up really well. Working with gloves. So much fun. Don't want it too pink. Oh, I hope that's not too much. Okay. Just make sure we blend it good. If that turns out too pink, I'm going to be mad. Oh, it's good. Not mad at y'all. Mad at myself. That's the light pink I was wanting. Thank goodness. I wanted to... You know, roses come in all different colors. So I wanted a really pretty light pink. So blend this just a second. And when you're blending with the blender, start with your lightest color. So we did the white. Now the light pink. Can you see that pink? Okay. Let me have that there. Uh, you know what? Before we move over. Let's get our fragrance oil, get our scale, and start getting this started. I'm sure you're you're done. It's almost been an hour. I'm so sorry. This is this is labor intensive sometimes. No, nope, we just want ounces, ounces, not pounds. There we go. Zero out your scale with your container. Now you can pick your container up and pour like this, because if I pour from a pie with anything, I always spill it. Okay, so that's 1.3 ounce. I'm just gonna pour a little bit in each one. Okay, make sure it's still there. About four ounces of fragrance oil is all you'll need. So another great thing about using a fragrance oil versus an essential oil is you can, well, with the fragrance oil, you can also, uh, you have to fi follow your dilution rates, of course. But just with essential oil, fragrance oil, you could add less to make it a lighter scent a lighter for, for smell. So it's about four ounces in an eight pound recipe for this fragrance oil. I, it, it, it's a little more than four ounces, but I like it to about four ounces because I want to, I, I don't want it overpoweringly strong. I want it, you know, just that beautiful, like when you smell a rose petal, when you smell roses. Okay, so I'm just gonna zip it. Tap it to tap the air bubbles out. I promise you, a few more minutes will be pouring. Okay, there's that one. It looks like it's gotten a little thicker. That's what we want. just a little darker. Can you tell? Go away, air bubbles. I don't want air bubbles. I run the risk of getting that too thick, so... If it's not thick enough, then when you go to pour them, they're gonna mix too much together. So you don't want that to happen. Yeah. 
Oh, it smells so good in here. Just saw someone watching. Okay, sorry it's taking so long. Labor love these soaps. It's a beautiful red. Can you see the red? Uh, the container's kind of blocking it. I love it. Just gonna put that there. I'm gonna unplug it so it doesn't wanna fall out anywhere. Okay, so I already have my white. This is the perfect uh, consistency. Let me just stir it, double check. Yes, it's getting thicker. Oh, you know what? I did not any add any fragrance oil on this. Luckily, I could just do a little half an ounce more. I want fragrance oil in every single batter. Here, I'll show. I'll do it the right way. Even though I have this down to a little bit of science, only because I use the same measuring cup and I've used this. Okay. There we go. We're gonna go with the red first and I'm gonna pour from this side so when I pour it into my mold so I'm gonna move down over here and I'm gonna pour the red oh come on so about half of the red a little bit more it's not half okay Now, we're going to do, go down the spectrum. Let me stir this up. Make sure it's at the, oh yeah, this is a good consistency. See how thick it is? It shouldn't mix too much with the, with the red. Okay. Now we do the pink. Actually, you know what? Second guessing myself, sorry. I want the white on this one. The white. Save some of the white. Now the light pink. We're pouring it all on one side, the same, the same spot. Now we're gonna go back with the red which the red is a little thinner because it didn't have the clay in it. So I'm gonna zip it with this really, really fast because I don't want it to mix with that white. Perfect. Just thickened it up just a tad. I can't wait uh, when we get these poured and I do, I cut them. I usually cut them on my Facebook live, but I will try to, um, I upload the video on to here 
from Facebook, but maybe I'll just do an exclusive cutting of the soaps tomorrow. They should be ready tomorrow because we used that sodium lactate. Okay, so I'm going to leave a tiny bit in this container to do like a little pretty drizzle on top. Thanks for bearing with me, you guys. I know it's labor intensive. So now I'm going to do an opposite. I'm going to do this one next. Not opposite, but we're going to do that. And then I'm going to use this white here. Oh, I love that pink. Now I'm going to use the rest of the white. Trying to work fast. So you can see the pouring. The pouring is what you've been waiting for, right? That's the exciting part. Then the darker pink. Fingers crossed, you guys, that these didn't mix, that they were the right consistency. They looked like it. So that way they don't mix too much and it becomes a beautiful drop swirl. Okay, here are my molds. Let me make, make way for some of this so you can see the pouring part. Now, we could tilt these. That would be an amazing technique that, um, I'll show you. You get a little wedge. Let's see where you see this. Over here, you can see these. Working on the fly, you guys, bear with me. Can you see how I have that tilted? You're not supposed to do this with such a large amount, but we're doing it. I'm just gonna, oh, I don't think so. I don't think my arm can handle it. You could tilt it and it would be a different uh, dramatic thing. But we're, we're going to just do it like this, okay? Because this is eight pounds of soap. I'm gonna stop. Now we're going to do this one. The reason why I stopped on this one, it was too, too red. So I was like, well, darn. So now I'll add the white to this one. And then I get to scrape out my big containers and then I have to do like a little top on these 
and that's it. So we will spray these all with alcohol. That'll help uh, burst any of the little bubbles that are on the surface. It'll also keep it from turning white on top because with this beautiful red, uh, we don't want you know it turning all white. Um, sometimes the soda, it's called soda ash. So if you do not, sorry, you can't see anything I'm doing. I need to be paying attention to you guys. I'm working quickly, so I don't, my soaps don't set up too quickly. Uh, the air bubbles, you just tap, tap. The alcohol helps any, pop any of the air bubbles on top. And then also protect against that white soda ash, which is not a big problem. But a lot of people work really hard to do the design on the top and do a little swirl. So, you know, that, that alcohol is going to help. And then we even pop a layer of cellophane on the very top. And it's just, uh, it just ensures it from getting that soda ash. So I'm fingers crossed that this is going to come out real pretty with the in the pot swirl. Um, and you could do a drop swirl, which would have been pouring all these individually into the molds and drop swirling, which always creates a beautiful design as well. It's one of our favorites here. But that's about it. So... I appreciate you watching. We got a little red we're topping off on the tops here. And as soon as I'm done, I'm cleaning. Yeah, I'm almost done. I'm still recording though. We're still on my live. <laughs> no, we can't go to your friend's house. Sorry. Why, Mom? Because we just can't. But the other day you did. Yeah, well, the other day you went for haircuts. Yay, you needed well, that. I haircuts Well, when your hair grows, we'll do, do, we'll do more haircuts, okay? Yeah, but this, no, when my hair is like long, no, let's do a haircut at wider on the rosies again. Okay. My very good friend cut their hair, so and she has uh, two small children, and they are so, super good friends. So, sorry I can't fast forward this. I know you must be bored to tears. Maybe when you're watching this and it's not live, you can fast forward to the ending, which you'll be able to see. Uh, how we do. Okay, now we get our little stick, a little sticky, and I just do like a little, little swirl on top. These would be a great Valentine soaps uh, if you want. I have a pretty Valentine soap. And I'm not sticking my stick all the way down. We are just uh, swirling kind of in a figure eight pattern. And each top is a little different. And then the roses. So tap, tap. And then, mm, where'd I put a little spoon? I'm gonna use my spatula. Uh, you want them to set up so you can get like little peaks in there. 
we could just do like this. A spoon works very, very nice. Just a metal spoon to move them to the side. So what, we're, what I'm trying to do is create a little spot to put the rose petals in. I'm not, I'm not doing anything super fancy. Uh, the soaps are almost not thick enough. We're just trying to make a little peek, a little, little spot so we could put our rose buds in. And then you could even take your stick and do like a little swirly. on those little peaks. Just like to give the soap a little texture. Oh, it smells so good. We made some beautiful Valentine soaps with heart embeds and stuff like that. So this soap uh, not only could be a great Valentine soap, uh, but we have had just so many requests for a rose soap, even though it's not Valentine's anymore. So here is our rose soaps. Here, one second. Touching the lie on my glove. i got to rinse my hand off. Only touched it for a second, so it's no big deal. So then we got our roses hour and 12 minutes that's not too bad from start to finish on making soap so if you're in interested in making your own rose soaps i highly encourage you play around i don't want the little stem play around with it make your own designs Add your own oils if you would love to um, use an actual rose essential oil. You can, but it's just going to cost quite a bit. I don't want that one. I don't want the too big of a green leaf. That's just me, though. These are just for decoration. And I don't want to put too much because some people complain about too much toppings. You see? I'll do a dramatic overlook in here. Not dramatic, but so you can see. I don't want the big uh, pieces. That's what I'm like these. I don't want. I don't want that in there. Whole rose buds would be beautiful. That would be a great addition. But they're a little, you know, more expensive. So it just depends on your budget and the aesthetics and how you want your soaps to look. Now this is where. You could put your Himalayan sea salt. This is what we use to eat with. Um, I don't like this. Mm, that's too fine. Let's unscrew it. There we go. I 
don't want a lot. Can you see it? I just am wanting to put it down the center. It's like a nice little decoration. I want to make sure every bar has some. And the salt will melt in the shower. So it's not going to clog your drain up or anything like that. It's just, it just looks pretty. It almost looks like rocks, but it's going to dissolve. So your those beautiful soaps I've seen, uh, which we want to make a rose quartz salt, rose quartz, or, uh, you know, get some pretty stones in there for like birthstone soaps, which are pretty, but... Okay, we're almost done, and then I'm going to show you the end. These are also, I'm trying to think about when I cut them. So when we cut these, you're, you're just going to have to, you might lose a few. So... I'm just trying to double check that I got, got them everywhere. And the stones, uh, the stones, excuse me, the salt, it will also uh, serve as a great like scrub. So if you, you know, want to use them as a little bit of a scrub, that would be great too. Da -da -da! Okay, let me show you. Uh oh, can you see it? Let me grab my alcohol. Ta -ta! These aren't like high peaks on them or anything. Which you definitely could. And if you wanted to pipe on the top of this, that would take a little extra time. But you definitely could get you a piping bag and pipe a big high top on these and then decorate them. But for shipping purposes and um, here, that is just not my thing. I honestly have spent quite a bit of time and effort just doing what I'm doing here. And if I were to do piping and add a bunch of extra things, I would have to charge way too much for these soaps. And I mean, some people will pay for it. But like I said before, we like to try to keep our soaps affordable. And if you want to check out all the soaps that we have created and that we have available, 3hfarmstx.com is our website. Uh, we are still a small company, so you still have to message me to place your order. But I do not collect your credit card information. We send you an invoice and we take care of it. Look, make sure you're wearing an apron also when you're making soaps. Uh, follow us on Instagram and Facebook at 3H Farms TX. And um, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. That really does help. And share it if you feel like sharing it. So we're just a small uh, farm. And I created these soaps to help our family with our sensitive skin. And then we opened up our business last year. And with everything, um, a lot of the shops that we were in had to close down because they weren't essential businesses. So we're just a small business trying to stay afloat and stay present um, on social media. And so if what we did here today um, you liked in any way, shape or form, please help and support us by subscribing and liking our channel and sharing if you can. So thank you so much for everything. I'm cleaning up. My kids and I are starving, so it's time for us to eat lunch. So thanks again. Thanks for your support. And thank you, YouTube. I love this community. And um, have a fantastic week. Tomorrow is Friday.
Let me end stream. End stream. Yes. Bye, y'all.